So one big question from last year was how many people go on to earn a certificate in massive open online courses. And the question that we wanted to answer this year was of those people who registered intending to complete a MOOC, how many of them go on to do so? First of all, is how are you going to figure out what people's intentions are? So at Harvard X, we did that by instituting a pre-course survey, which were, everyone was encouraged to take, but was ultimately optional. And we asked people a question which said, people register for courses with many different reasons. What's your reason for registering for the course? And the possible responses were to earn a certificate in the class, to complete some of the materials, but not all of the materials, We call, but not earn a certificate. We call those folks auditors. To just briefly take a look at the class but not really do very many of the materials we call those folks browsers and then people could also say that they were unsure of what their intentions were so one of the things that you have to take into consideration when looking at survey data is what kinds of people actually go about answering the survey uh, so it turns out that for this optional but encouraged Harvard X pre-course survey um, about a quarter of folks who ever register for the class end up taking the survey not quite half but nearly half of folks who do any kind of action at all, who click once anywhere, uh, take our survey. And about two thirds of people who get a grade greater than zero, whoever answer at least one question correctly, uh, take our survey. So we did this research last year and we found that hundreds of thousands of people had registered for our courses and about five or six percent of them went on to earn a certificate. By just about anybody's measure, certainly at the first pass of hearing that number, it sounds a bit disappointing. You know, certainly when we think about what good completion rates for courses would be in typical contexts, you know, we'd hope that 80%, 90% of people, even in some of our most difficult circumstances of remedial courses that we're most worried about, we can still get half the people or 40% of people to complete a course. One thing that is helpful in interpreting these numbers though is recognizing that of these hundreds of thousands of people who are registering for a course many of them never had any intention to complete the course they came there to browse they came there to audit they came there to look around they wanted to glance quickly at the syllabus and then choose among a couple of competing courses so it seemed that a better place to focus our analytic attention would be on those students who intended to complete the course. And we found that uh, in our surveys, about more than half of the people who answer our surveys said, about 58% of folks said that they intended to complete a course. Um, so that's an interesting analytic sample to look at. People who put in the effort to complete the optional pre-course survey and then told us that they were intending on completing the course. Of those folks, about 22% go on to complete the course. That's helpful in interpreting uh, the impact that our courses are having. That's helpful in setting a benchmark. So I'd say there are three things that instructional designers, course faculty, course teams could take away from this research. The first is just maybe a more useful benchmark for completion rates. So to be able to say that of the people who intended to complete uh, the course across nine different courses on average, we had about 22% of those people who ended up finishing a course. So a second thing that you could take away from the research is that there are lots of people who don't intend to complete courses who go on to do so. So about 6% of people who tell us that they intended to browse the course and about 7.5% of people who intended to audit the course went on to earn a certificate. So we could think of that almost as flipping people's intentions, that one goal that course faculty and course developers might aim for is to try to get a bunch of folks who tell us that they don't intend to complete a course to be so compelled by the material or so so engaged by the learning experiences that they go on to finish the course. The third big takeaway from the research, which confirms what we found in other settings, is that the early parts of the course is when the highest attrition happens. So regardless of what people's stated intentions are, early in the course is when most of the people who sign up for the course end up deciding not to persist in the course and end up deciding to do other things. I think this has some real implications from course design. Number one, because it means the earliest parts of the course are what the majority majority of the people who register for a course will see. And it's also really the main opportunity that course developers and course faculty have to capture people, to engage them, to convince them that they, these learning experiences are really worthwhile. So from a course development perspective, I would really encourage folks who are building these courses to think about that first unit as a really special part of the course and a really important part of the course. You know, one thing that may seem logical to do is to build the introduction to the course first, to do that as the sort of first prototype unit. 
I actually think that course teams might want to think about in their design process building the middle of the course first and then really waiting until they've figured as much as they possibly can out about how to create compelling parts of the course. What are the best ways of crafting assessments? What are the most interesting interactives? What are the most compelling ways of sharing your ideas in video? And doing all of the development for the beginning of the course at the very end because that's the part of the course that the majority of folks who ever register for your course will see. And and it's really the chance you have to capture people and to convince them that the learning experience that you're going to offer in the weeks ahead is really worthwhile. So we've just given you the highlights here. There's lots more analyses and details and cross-course comparison in the full paper, which is MOOC completion and retention in the context of student intent being published this month in Educause Review Online.